Good morning. Welcome to Worship at Grace Lutheran Church, whether you have joined us in person or online or maybe a hybrid of both as you're speeding down the road. Um, we are thrilled that uh, God has joined us together uh, to be served by Him and praise His name on this Reformation Day. Um, as Lutherans, we remember Reformation Day as kind of like, uh, first of all, our birthday. This is the day that uh, we remember when Luther nailed his 95 theses or accusations of abuses against the church on the castle church door in Wittenberg, Germany, which kind of sparked the, the Reformation and has us gathered and called Lutherans to this day. Uh, in particular, we remember... <clears throat> Uh, the access to the scripture that was important to Luther. We remember uh, bringing the pure, beautiful, sweet gospel message back into the Christian church. And so uh, those are going to be themes that you're going to see unfold in our service today. All right. Uh, first of all, uh, my name is Landon Martin. I'm one of the pastors here at Grace. I'm thrilled that you've joined us. I am uh, blessed to be leading worship today with uh, Pastor Yoon, two of our elders, uh, Steve Simmons and Dave Potter, and Becky Benninghoff on the organ, also featuring our Grace Choir this morning. Um, I like to point out when things are uh, special or a little out of the ordinary. So we'll start with, if your German's not up to snuff, this, this banner here, <clears throat> it says... A Mighty Fortress is Our God, which, uh, of course, is kind of the, uh, the hymn that Luther wrote that's the, the battle hymn of the Reformation that we'll be singing today. You heard uh, the melody and the prelude this morning. Um, this candle here uh, burned on the altar at the Castle Church in Wittenberg and was part of an anniversary celebration of the congregation a number of years ago. Um, this flowing poncho situation I have here. Um, <clears throat> it's called a chausable. Its uh, purpose is uh, typically to highlight the color of the day and the theme, uh, but also to signify the pastor who is in charge of the communion part of the worship service, and uh, definitely a, a traditional Lutheran liturgical thing. Uh, the reason I don't do it more often is it's hot, um, So, uh, but today for Reformation uh, I brought it out. Um, with that, would you please grab your bulletin inserts, and we will turn to the inside page, the second page there. Under Board of Christian Education, we'll read together our verse of the month. And let's, let's do that with the Second Timothy 3 part. All Scripture is breathed out by God and profitable for teaching, for reproof, for correction, and for training in righteousness, that the man of God may be complete and equipped for every good work. Timothy 3. Okay, I would like to now highlight one thing in the bulletin, and that's the closing hymn. So page 14, if you'll look at that with me for a second. Okay, I just wanted to point out that uh, we haven't done anything like this for a while, but the, the different stanzas, the verses of the hymn, are separated by men, women, everyone, choir, so just, uh, just watch for that. Uh, this is another one of those triumphant, wonderful Lutheran hymns and uh, a wonderful one to send us out of, of worship today, uh, but just take note of that. Um, when it comes to uh, Bible class after worship, uh, in person, it will be the same. Everyone should have a handle on where your, uh, your room is. If you don't, uh, grab a pastor, an elder, an usher, something like that, and we will help you out. If you're online, uh, you should have access to the links for that uh, in your email or uh, available to you on the church website, so you can uh, check that out. Uh, every age level has a hybrid option that is available to you. Now, uh, again, I would like to uh, remind you all before we get started that uh, the theme today is so pure and so simple and so wonderful and makes the Christian church what it is. It's that uh, when the world tells you you're not good enough, when uh, your heart hangs heavy with guilt, Jesus tells you clearly by his work you are forgiven. And that is true and certain and eternal, and it's the reason we gather and celebrate this morning and every morning. And with that, I invite you all to stand as we begin worship in the Lord's name and with his blessing with our hymn of invocation.
In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. If we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. But if we confess our sins, God, who is faithful and just, will forgive our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Let us then confess our sins to God our Father. Most merciful God, we confess that we are by nature sinful and unclean. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed. By what we have done, by what we have left undone, we have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We justly deserve your present anger. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us. Forgive us, renew us. And for his sake, we forgive you all your sins as a called and ordained servant of Christ. And by his authority, therefore, I forgive you all your sins in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit.
The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. Almighty and gracious Lord, pour out your Holy Spirit on your faithful people. Keep us steadfast in your grace and truth. Protect and deliver us in times of temptation. Defend us against all enemies. And grant to your church your saving peace through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. The first reading for the Festival of the Reformation is from Revelation, the Le Revelation to St. John, chapter 14. Then I saw another angel flying directly overhead with an eternal gospel to proclaim to those who dwell on earth, to every nation and tribe and language and people. And he said with a loud voice, fear God and give him glory because the hour of his judgment has come and worship him who made heaven and earth the sea and the springs of water. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The epistle is from Romans chapter 3. Now we know that whatever the law says, it speaks to those who are under the law, so that every mouth may be stopped, and the whole world may be held accountable to God. For by works of the law, no human being will be justified in his sight, since through the law comes knowledge of sin. But now the righteousness of God has been manifested apart from the law. Although the law and the prophets bear witness to it, the righteousness of God through faith in Jesus Christ for all who believe. For there is no distinction, for all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God and are justified by his grace as a gift through the redemption that is in Christ Jesus, whom God put forward as a propitiation by his blood to receive, be received by faith. This was to show God's righteousness, because in his divine forbearance, he had passed over former sins. It was to show his righteousness at the present time, so that he might be just and the justifier of the one who has faith in Jesus. Then what becomes of our boasting? It is excluded. By what kind of law? By a law of works? No, but by the law of faith. For we hold that one is justified by faith apart from the works of the law. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Gospel according to St. John, 8th chapter. Glory to you, o Lord. So Jesus said to the Jews who had believed in him, If you abide in my word, you are truly my disciples, and you will know the truth, and the truth will set you free. They answered him, We are offspring of Abraham, and have never seen, have never been enslaved to anyone. How is it that you say you will become free? Jesus answered them, truly, truly, I say to you, everyone who commits sin is a slave to sin. The slave does not remain in the house forever. The son remains forever. So if the son sets you free, you will be free indeed. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, o Christ.
grace, mercy, and peace be multiplied unto you. From God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. The text, our gospel lesson, John chapter 8, and I'd like to highlight the following words. Anyone who sins is a slave to sin. And later, if the Son sets you free, you're free indeed. So far the text. This year I've been thinking about the idea of the festival of the Reformation in terms of heroes and villains. We certainly have enough of those in the Reformation history. But here's what I mean. We really love a good hero story to start out with. Something like this. Uh, In 2007, there was a college student, 19 years old, standing on a platform waiting for a New York subway train to come. Shortly before the train did arrive, he suffered a seizure. He fell off the platform and over the tracks. The train was coming. Adjacent to him, a 50-year-old father of two standing with his two daughters waiting for the same train. He jumps off the platform, grabs the man, rolls into a maintenance trough between the tracks, and by seconds, They were in the right spot at the right height, and neither one was injured as the train went overhead by just inches. There's a hero in that story. Let's do another one. The Winter Winter family was vacationing in Florida. Mom, Dad, little girl, Paige. Mom and Dad were sitting in their beach chairs at the water. Paige was out swimming in the ocean, and all of a sudden, they noticed Paige screamed, and she was jerked from side to side, like this. Dad, Charlie, well, he's a United States Marine. He runs out into the water, punches the shark in the head five times until the shark gives up, lets the little girl go, and he carries her back to her mother and to safety. By the way, when I read that story, it said that Paige wanted everyone to know, whoever hears her story, that she still believes sharks are good people. There's a hero in that story. Sometimes, though, we get captivated, we get caught up in a villain. Someone like Wellington Burt. At the turn of the 20th century, he was a lumber baron in northern Michigan. Eighth richest person in America at the time he died. Mayor of Saginaw at one point, a state senator later. And as one final stroke of a reputation well-deserved, he changed his will. That reputation, by the way, was him being a fierce, heartless politician. Someone that would not help a person or a group in need in terms of his time, his fortune, or otherwise. And that will change... Well, that stipulated that his entire fortune be held in a trust until such time as his last living grandchild had been dead for 21 years. And so, 92 years after his death, 12 people that never met him split up a fortune they never knew they had coming. Many lawsuits challenged this, and they all failed. There's a villain in that story. But this day has its own villains, of course. So in the 15th and 16th century, when people went to church, they heard the service, the sermon, the preaching, everything in a language they couldn't understand. But they kept going faithfully because they understood one thing about God to be absolutely true. He was angry with them and took great delight in punishing them in this world and the next. Well, the Vatican decided to start a program that would offer some hope and raise some funds for some good projects to help people. And so they started this program called Indulgences, where people could buy sheets of paper that would free them, supposedly, from the punishments of God. The people could barely afford this. This made the the oppression, their fear of the Lord, even worse. There's a big villain in that story. Sometimes the villain is so big, we want, we need, we need to see the hero emerge. So in 1521, 
Emperor Charles V receives word that a priest in his jurisdiction named Martin Luther has been excommunicated by the Pope. He doesn't like this very much. He summons Martin Luther to stand trial in what has been remembered in history as the Diet of Worms. In a trial that would go on for months, it became apparent pretty rapidly the emperor wanted one specific thing and one thing only. He wanted Luther to recant of all of the writings he had ever done, all of them. Luther was kind of prepared for this. He mounted a smart defense, separating his different writings into groups and appealing for the Christian value and virtue of some of them, but it was no use. At a certain point, the representative of the emperor stood up and firmly said, Revoco, or recant. Luther was a little shaken by this. He collected himself. He went back to his defense, but the representative of the emperor again, Revoco, and back and forth they went. Revoco, Revoco. Finally, Luther knew he couldn't win the day. And it was there that he explained to the court that he could not, would not ever recant of anything unless he could be shown on the basis of the scriptures where it was wrong. And then tradition remembers those famous words, here I stand, I can do no other, so help me God, amen. Luther was convicted at that trial. He spent the rest of his life on the run, afraid for his life. The emperor made it a crime to associate with Martin Luther or offer him aid of any kind. There's a hero in that story. I think sometimes when we're looking at heroes and villains, especially in real life stories around us, we can get so caught up in celebrating the heroes and pointing fingers at the villains that we're just like the Jewish people in our gospel lesson who proclaim we're offspring of Abraham. We've never been enslaved to anyone. How can you talk about us being free? That puffed up feeling that we don't need a savior. We don't need a hero. And yet the truth is, if we look at the stories of our own lives, of our own humanity, of our own sinful nature, it's pretty often, if we're honest, we're the villain of the story. Here's what I mean. If you hear a rumor and your instinct is to pick up your phone and call someone and tell them or text them or email them or something, pass it on, in that story, you're the villain. If you, again, have too much to do, can't make the time to call mom, again, you're becoming the villain in that story. If you have that coworker, probably most people do, that just gets under your skin again and again, and one day you've just had enough, and you let them have it, and you say some things that you really shouldn't have and kind of regret, you're the villain in that story, too. If you all of a sudden realize as you look around your life that it's getting easier for days to pass by, forgetting altogether about the God who created and sustained your life, it gets pretty apparent how easy it is to become a slave to sin in our human nature and how easy it is to be the villain in thousands of stories. But it's right there, right there, in that moment of despair, realizing that we are helpless in a broken, sinful world as sinful people, helpless to be anything other than the villain in a thousand different stories. It's right there in the fullness of time. 
that Caesar Augustus issued a decree and the king of angels stepped off his throne to save the world. And he came down and he took on humanity and Jesus was rejected and suffered and died at the hands of the people he came to save. And when he cried out, it is finished, we saw exactly for all time what a real hero looks like. And when the angel proclaimed to the women three days later, why do you look for the living among the dead? He is risen. We saw what it really means when Jesus Christ is our hero that we too will be forgiven and we too will rise. There's one more hero, one more hero that I have to mention this morning. Because Reformation is all about the gospel. Reformation remembers that when the world says, you're not good enough, you can't do it, you'll never be any better, you could have, you should have, you would have, you can't, you're wrong. The gospel, it says forgiven. And that message is too good, too amazing to realize what Jesus Christ has done for us to not spread it out. So today, that final hero that I want to mention in your life is the person, and we all have one, the person that first told you about Jesus. That person that loved you so much they could not bear to let you live in a world of all villains without a hero. That person knew from personal experience what it means to be the villain in other people's stories countless times. That person knew what it meant to have their heart hang heavy with guilt and they gave you a gift. They gave you a gift that would let you know definitively, positively, forever that while everyone who sins is a slave to sin, the eternal truth is that when God's Son, Jesus, sets you free, you are free indeed. Amen. Now may the peace of God, which certainly surpasses understanding, keep your hearts and your minds in Jesus Christ to life eternal. Amen. Please stand. This morning, in response to the word of God, as his people, we confess our common Christian faith in the triune God with the words of the Nicene Creed. I believe in one God. Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and all things visible and invisible, and in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only God and Son of God, the God of his Father before all worlds, God of God, light of light, very God of very God, begotten and not made, being of one substance with the Father, by whom all things were made, who for us men and for our salvation came down from heaven was incarnate by the Holy Spirit of the Virgin Mary, and was made man, and was crucified also for us under Pontius Pilate. He suffered and was buried, and the third day he rose again according to the scriptures, and ascended into heaven, and sits at the right hand of the Father. He will come again with glory to judge both the living and the dead, whose kingdom will have no end. And I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord and giver of life, proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and Son together is worshipped and glorified, who is spoke by the prophets. And I believe in one holy Christian apostolic church. I acknowledge one baptism for the remission of sins, and I look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. This morning we pray for the whole people of God in Christ Jesus and all people according to their needs. In peace, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. 
for the Holy Christian Church here and scattered throughout the world, and for the proclamation of the gospel and the calling of all to faith, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For this nation, our cities, our communities, our leaders in the military who protect us, including and especially remembering Renee, Scott, Kevin, Rachel, Abby, Derek, Dan, Thomas, Jim, Stephen, Tim, Jonathan, Paul, Chandler, Stephen, Randall, Chris, Sean, Stephen, Evan, Laith, Paul, Michael, and Nathan. And for the common welfare of us all, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the sick and for all those who care for them, including and especially remembering Mary, Fran, Trey, Jeff, Ellie, Winnie, Todd, Justin, Scott, Arthur, Amanda, Ernie, Jeff, Heather, Charlotte, Harmon, Joanne, Fran, Dasha, Mark, Nancy, Lisa, Ann, Janice, Don, Pat, Michael, Debbie, Ina, Eli, John, and Jason. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the family and friends of Andrew, that they would be comforted in the hope of the resurrection, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. In celebration and thanksgiving for the healthy birth of Anna, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. In thanksgiving for Martin Luther, for all the reformers, and asking that all pastors of the church would be emboldened by the sharing of the gospel, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. Finally, for these and for all our needs of body and soul, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Amen. Amen. Please be seated. Thank you. 
Please stand. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We give up them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give him thanks and praise. It is truly good, right, and salutary that we should at all times and in all places give thanks to you, Holy Lord, Almighty Father, everlasting God, through Jesus Christ our Lord, who on this day overcame death and the grave and by his glorious resurrection opened to us the way of everlasting life. Therefore, with angels and archangels and all the company of heaven, we laud and magnify your glorious name, evermore praising you and saying, Blessed are you, Lord of heaven and earth, for you have had mercy on those whom you created and sent your only begotten Son into our flesh to bear our sin and be our Savior. With repentant joy, we receive the salvation accomplished for us by the all-availing sacrifice of his body and his blood on the cross. Gathered in the, rena- the name and the remembrance of Jesus, we beg you, O Lord, to forgive, renew, and strengthen us with your word and spirit. Grant us faithfully to eat his body and drink his blood, as he bids us do in his own testament. Gather us together, we pray, from the ends of the earth, to celebrate with all the faithful the marriage feast of the Lamb and his kingdom, which has no end. Graciously receive our prayers, deliver and preserve us. To you alone, O Father, be all glory, honor, and worship, with the Son and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. And our Lord Jesus Christ, the night when he was betrayed, took bread. When he had given thanks, he broke it, gave it to his disciples, and said, Take and eat. This is my body, which is given for you. This do in remembrance of me. The same way also he took the cup after supper. When he had given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink of it, all of you. This cup is the New Testament in my blood, which is shed for you for the forgiveness of sins. This do as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. And the peace of the Lord be with you always. Amen.
Please stand. Now may this true body and true blood of our Lord and our Savior, Jesus Christ, strengthen you and keep you steadfast in the one true faith to life everlasting. Depart in his peace and his joy. Amen. Let us pray. We give thanks to you, Almighty God, that you have refreshed us through this salutary gift. We implore you that of your mercy you would strengthen us through the same in faith toward you and in fervent love toward one another. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face to shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. Amen. Amen.